Well, good morning, my friends. My name is Patrick Tugwell, and I am excited to be here with you this morning. Uh, today, I have a little bit something different. Uh, I'm actually going to be giving a first-person pure narrative sermon uh, from the book of Genesis, chapter 4, from the uh, story of Cain and Abel. So I'm excited to share this message with you in a pure narrative form. Uh, so before we begin, will you bow with me in prayer? God, we're here, and we believe that you're here too. Be in the words that I speak, Lord, and be in the message that is delivered today. God, we love you. Amen. killed my brother. It was hundreds of years ago. But I, I can still remember his face. And the blood. I was a farmer back then and just south of Eden. I worked with my dad. It's quite the job description to say you work for the First farmer ever. <laughs> Pretty crazy. It was hard work. Uh, but Dad always made it better by reminding us of the Garden of Eden and how it was back then. How him and my mom would go for walks with the Creator God and in the evenings, and just to be able to experience that time with the one who created the world in seven days. Well, six days, and then he took a nap, but uh, who wouldn't? <laughs> Just being able to experience a perfect world like that must have been really nice. They'd always tell me about how my dad was the caretaker of the garden, and he did do some planting every once in a while, but he'd tell me about how the the ground would just open up like butter and didn't matter what he planted, that there was a cool mist that would come and bring forth crops every year, fruit trees year round. Must have been insane. And now we're having to work in the fields, sun up to sun down, tirelessly. If you ever wanted to start a rock quarry south of Eden is uh, definitely where you'd go. And then there was my brother. He was born after me. I'm the oldest. He was a shepherd. Ever since he could walk, my brother always had sheep following him. And after a while, the flock grew and grew that he had and just looked like such an easy job. I just didn't I didn't understand it. He would just call the sheep over and they would follow him. And Sometimes every once in a while one would wander off, but they'd always come back. <laughs> Sometimes I'd joke with him when he came back with, uh, with all his sheep and I'd say, Hey, why don't you call some of those potatoes up uh, off, out of the ground out over there and maybe they'll follow you home too. <laughs> you know, like brothers do. He knew I was just messing around, you know, but uh, I think looking back on it now, I, I was definitely a little jealous. He was always the favorite. Whenever my parents had something for the family to do, something laborious, something that I had to, I had to do it. And then if they had like a, anything beneficial, a shady spot in this, you know, the, the forest or or whatever, they'd always give it to Abel. Sometimes it was hard being the older brother. They'd expect so much from me, especially when you're the only family on the face of the earth, which was just weird to think about. It was just us, my parents, 
me and my brother. My brother was definitely the favorite. I probably should uh, talk to someone about it, but it's, it's pretty hard. And that wasn't even the worst part. Every year we would get together as a family, go out to the field where my dad had set up a stone pillar and Abel would bring his big fat sheep. It was always the best sheep that he had. We would offer it up on the altar and our parents would tell us about how the garden used to be and just how the sin had affected their lives. This offering was a sacrifice of sheep to clothe them in their sin. Always really powerful moments, but uh, it was always able sheep every time. And God would come by during that time. And it was always so great to see him when I was younger. You could never really see him, but you know you could always feel that he was there. His presence was so strong. And just being able to experience that, even for the moments that my parents used to be able to spend all their time with, that, that, that was pretty cool. But over the years of watching God look down on my brother's sacrifice and you know God being so pleased with it, it was just really hard to take. I'm not sure if y'all understand that feeling with brothers, but it was, uh, it was stressful sometimes. And after so many years of that, the stress I had just turned into something even worse. One day I was, uh, I remember playing with some of the soil and it was around that time of the year when, when we normally sacrifice the sheep and I was getting really anxious. I was really feeling bad about my, my why in life. And uh, I thought, you know, why don't I bring one of my produce this year? See if God will like that. Maybe I'll get to, you know, one-up my brother. I thought it was a perfect chance to show my parents the kind of true man that I am. I mean, it was my dad's job, and he passed all his knowledge to me, but it was definitely an opportunity to stand out. So I went early that morning. I remember I, I set up my own little pillar you know, with some sticks and leaves next to my father's. It didn't look the same, but I was trying, and I was there putting my produce on it, and I showed my brother up. He came with his lamb, and just like he always did, and he started questioning my motives. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what the audacity of this guy? I, you're really going to try to sacrifice fruit? Come on. I remember him telling me that. And I just didn't want to hear it. This was my time to shine. I remember thinking that and couldn't get that out of my head. So my parents showed up and they asked me about it too. They were questioning me, questioning my motives. I, I just, I didn't understand why nobody wanted me to succeed. And I was explaining it all and, you know, I remember being there and so we lit our offerings my parents started talking about what the sacrifices really meant just like they always did but this time it was annoying because I knew they were just trying to put me down and then I felt God's presence coming near I was so excited finally because I brought something pretty good I remember bringing my best strawberries it was uh it was so cool and I know like celery doesn't smell very good when it's burning, but you know, well, okay. Abel's at lamb was, it did pr smell pretty good, but this was my best. And I was, it was my time to shine. Then God came down and looked on Abel's sacrifice and he didn't even look at mine. He didn't even look at it. And that made me so angry. This was my moment. I was finally going to make my parents proud and get some attention. And I just remember feeling so shameful about the whole thing. And I know I had done it for the wrong reasons, but in the moment when God finally looked over at me and said, you know, why are you so angry? You knew this was going to happen. Why are you so downcast? You know, if you 
do what is right, I'm going to accept you. And if you do what is wrong, sin is just waiting at your door, ready to take control of you. You need to control it. You need to stay on top of it. And I was like, come on. Come on, just for once. And I just remember being so ashamed at that time. and So I just waited for my family to go away from me. And I had this gnawing feeling. and Just shame. I just remember feeling shame. And so a few days later, I had been stewing on this situation the whole time and just getting madder and madder the whole time. So I thought, you know what? I think today would be a good day to go out and kind of get some of my frustration out. Maybe, maybe I'll ask Abel to go for a walk with me. So uh, that morning, I, I went over and I just started talking to Abel and By the time we got into my field, we started, what started as a convo turned into a debate. What was a debate turned into an argument. And then that turned into yelling. Gosh, I remember yelling so loud and felt like God was just going to come and hear me. Then we, we were at each other's throats like Abel knew what was right. He was always such a righteous guy, but I was telling him, you knew that this was my time to shine. You always get in my way and mom and dad are always happy with you and God is always looking down and it's so hard. And Abel said to me, Cain, you knew what you were supposed to do. You knew what God expected of you and you didn't listen. You knew. So I pushed him. And I pushed him again. But that wasn't enough and I grabbed this rock and I've seen a lot of stuff in my, my life, but uh, seeing life leave someone's eyes is uh, something else. So I just ran. I remember running as fast as I could. I just got out of there. I had this feeling of fear and regret just welling up inside of me and trying to process what I had done. I'd, I'd never seen someone die before. and It had always just been sheep to that point. And I ran to a thicket that my brother and I had been to before just to get away and I just sat there and I cried and cried and was so remorseful. I was just as upset at myself and I thought God would never want to see me again and who knew what he was going to do to me and I just knew I, what I deserved for what I had done. I knew God would come and talk to me eventually like he always does so I just sat there for... I don't know how long. It's a long time. I'm trying to process everything. And then it got dark and God came to me right after and that time and I, I knew he was there. I could feel him. And then God asked me a question. He said well, he didn't he didn't looked down on me with judgment. He didn't say, you deserve this for what you did. He just asked me a question. He said, Cain, where is your brother? Obviously, he, I knew he was going to ask me that question eventually. But out of regret and fear and probably a little anger at the time, I was like, come on, God. I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? And I remember God being so angry and felt like my skin was going to boil from his anger. And so I just fell to my knees in fear and I put my hands up in complete terror and what I just thought would be complete wrath and I thought he was gonna give me what I deserved and take my life like my brothers. I sat there for a minute and he finally said, What have you done, Cain? Your brother's blood is calling out to me from the ground. And then he cursed me and said, The same ground that soaked up your brother's blood, it won't behave for you anymore. No matter how hard you work, you won't be able to grow anything anymore. You'll be outcast. And you'll be wandering out in the highlands. I just remember being so terrified when he said that. It was a perfect opportunity, too, for me to call out God and just say, God, I need your mercy. But I was just so caught up in my own fear, I didn't even know what to do in the moment. So I said, God, that's just too much for me to handle. You've taken so much away from me. You've taken my livelihood, 
You're going to cast me aside from my parents just like that? And by then, God wasn't angry anymore. I thought he was going to kill me or something. And he said, no one will kill you. And then God gave me this mark. Everyone knows now that I'm Cain, the, the brother killer. That's what they're calling me. And if you harm me, then God's going to avenge sevenfold at least. But um, there I was in the thicket and thinking about what I had done, how the creator God who walked with my parents separated me from them. And I thought there's no way I could ever go back to talking to my parents again. So I was just too ashamed. Remembering back to them, telling us the stories about them sinning and how they knew that in the moment that they were going to die. And they didn't know that one of their sons would be the first to go. So here I am now as a, an old man and just looking back on what's happened since, since all that. And the first several decades was hard, scrounging for food in the wild. And I, just, I remember trying to stay alive. I was avoiding people for the longest time. My parents have had more kids. And I think their kid's name is Seth or something what I heard. Got a wife for me and I don't even have to worry about farming anymore. Uh, tried a few times, you know, but um, nothing worked over the years. And I can't even grow a flower. <laughs> you know, I'm living in a city that my sons built and uh, it's pretty nice. One of my sons actually is a sheep herder now, which I think is kind of ironic. But um, just to see how God has provided for me, even though I deserved much worse. And I remember thinking, what I deserve is out here in the field with my brother. But that's the thing, isn't it? God's always there, willing to come meet you where you're at. Willing to provide for you a chance to confess your sins and always there to give you a second chance. I guess that's what I have for you this evening. And just remember that. Whether you're sinning or enjoying a time of peace right now, just remember that God's always there to spend time with you, even if you've sinned, like I did. He's waiting for you to call out for forgiveness, to scoop you up in his little arms and give a, a blessing like he always does. Thanks for listening to my story.